Alright, I'd like to show a design I created for a mob farm that uses the new uh, slime block uh, properties in the 1.8 uh, snapshot. So the idea is that you have a swiper here that swipes the mobs off uh, this uh, spawning platform. It's uh, dark at the moment, I have this uh, platform here and I'm drunk a uh, potion of night vision. So the mob get pushed around and fall down to the death. Uh, in this version, uh, the spiders won't be pushed because they are one high and the slime block push uh, at the second uh, block height. Uh, but it pushes uh, all the mobs that are too, or too high or higher. Um, now I'll sh I will show uh, why it works and uh, how to build it. The idea for this system is to use this uh, slime row, which I will call a slimy swiper and uh, send uh, pulses to it. So we have the slime row and two sticky pistons here. Now if I send a one tick pulse from this row, this piston extends and retracts and pushes the slime row and the other piston, one block. Now I send another uh, pulse, a normal pulse on the other row and this piston um, extends the slime uh, row and grabs the piston. Now the whole thing, the whole swiper has moved one block in this direction. I can uh, do it again. Oops. Okay, it moves another block in this direction, and the whole thing is reversible. If I send the one tick pulse here and then the normal pulse here, the system will move towards me. Now, to push mobs, all you have to do is now uh, spawn them. So you can either put the spawning spaces one below here, and the mobs will be pushed uh, by the slime uh, row or alternatively you can uh, put the spawning spaces uh, just beneath the slime row and it will push the spiders uh, but you have to use uh, a block that is not pushable by pistons so uh, uh, obsidian for instance okay uh, in terms of width uh, the pistons have to can push uh, a maximum of 12 blocks so this piston has to push this piston and the slime row so the slime row can be uh, uh, 11 uh, blocks in width uh, at its maximum um, I will now show how to uh, build a system that uh, automatically uh, moves the slime swiper uh, uh, up and down uh, in the spawning spaces Okay, the first thing to do is to generate one tick pulses. This is what I have here. I press the button and the torch pulses for one tick. The repeater here is on three ticks. Then we need to send this, this signal to uh, redstone lines up above. So on the left side I have a repeater on one tick, a, a block. Five blocks of redstone, a redstone ladder uh, going up uh, six blocks. Um, and then a repeater on one tick pointing to the redstone line here uh, with the obsidian then I can install my um, uh, slimy swiper as I called it so one um, uh, piston and then 11 slime blocks 1, 2, 3, 4 11 and the obsidian on the other side and we need another piston facing towards uh, the slime blocks nope okay um, then another uh, redstone line here okay and we need to send power to this uh, redstone line as well so on the right side I will have a repeater set on two ticks so a normal pulse, not a very short one, a piston al as well, five uh, redstone dust and a redstone ladder here as well okay and it's a good idea, where is my repeater on the other side? it's uh, here so it's a good idea to have the other repeater uh, three blocks away from this one so one two three it should be here at this position okay 
So another repeater on three ticks and uh, finish the ladder. Okay. Now, uh, when I send this uh, one tick pulse using this, the whole system should move. Okay, it moved in this direction, one block, and again. If I switch the positions of the repeater, so this one on one tick and this one on two ticks, it should move the other way around. Okay. So, the swiper is in place. Uh, now it's a good idea to uh, put uh, a small clock on this uh, power block. So a repeater here, uh, nope, a repeater here and here. One tick is enough for each repeater and then the clock can start and I will put a repeater to stop it. Okay, so it's moving in this direction. Um, Okay, uh, a good. so I said that uh, this repeater has to be three blocks away f laterally from this one because at the end of the redstone line it's good to have uh, this line going three blocks further than this one. So let's see, one, two, three. So the other one should stop here. So at the position was where the piston was. Okay. And um, if you want to uh, use the full length of the redstone wire, so 15 blocks in that direction, that's why it's good to have the repeaters not at the same po the at the same position. Okay, so we want to be able now to switch between going in this direction and in this direction, and we don't want uh, to uh, manually change the position of the repeaters. So. Uh what I will do is add another uh, two other repeaters here. So this one will be on one tick because this one is on two. So this one has to be on one tick and uh, a block here and a block here. Oop. And grab the redstone signal behind. Okay, so now we want to switch between these two blocks. I will use uh, sticky pistons for, th for that facing up, uh, facing down, sorry. Okay, so uh, now same thing on the other side. Two sticky pistons. Okay, and to switch uh, between the two, I will uh, invert the signal. Okay. put a redstone dust here and uh, a lever here so when the lever is on uh, it sends one tick to this side and two ticks to this side so it should moves move to the right and when I switch this back off uh, one tick on my left side and two ticks on the left and the right side it should move uh, in this direction okay Let's try it. Oh, no, no, <laughs> I got it wrong. Okay. Come back to me. Okay, so it's moving in one direction. And if I switch this lever back off. It's moving in the other direction. Perfect. Okay. Um, so you might want to uh, use another clock than this one because this one creates lights update uh, with these uh, two torches. But uh, I will leave that to you. Uh, these light updates are not a big problem because it will not occur as often as uh, the clock. Uh, it will occur when the, the um, uh, slime pusher has to change direction so now we have to, to uh, decide when to make it go uh, in on to, to towards the left and when to make it go towards the right right so I will uh, set up a counter uh, that is fitted by this uh, uh, signal that pulses every one every time 
the mover moves one block and the counter has to switch states uh, when the pistons reach the end of the redstone line okay so the counter has to feed into this block uh, to control the state of the pistons so I will put a repeater on this uh, towards this block uh, let's see and it will be powered by a torch here the counter I will use by the way is the is a um, drop a drop a thing so two torches here the torches will power uh, two uh, droppers down below and but they are uh, but powered because the torch is two block high um, now out of these uh, droppers we want to take a comparator signal oh, no, not a repeater, a comparator one here and one here uh, these comparators feed into two blocks that power torches on top of, of the torches two uh, blocks and on top of that two droppers okay in one of the dropper I will put one item uh, one glass bottle and these two droppers control the state uh, of the of the counter so to do that I need two more comparators out of these uh, droppers that power these torches so now the droppers are in one state and if the item here cha changes dropper uh, the counter changes state now in order to count we need to power these two uh, droppers so two blocks uh, behind and uh, a redstone line coming from uh, the main clock of the system now I will put a few items inside the this dropper for instance so four and the pearls and I don't know two sugars in this one uh, because this torch is on this dropper is actually powered this one is not so when I send signal uh, to these uh, two droppers uh, this one is changed his state didn't change so it didn't send the sugar to the other side but this one was not powered but got powered by this signal so it sent uh, his uh, ender pearls to the left so if I do it a few times the number of ender pearls diminishes here good one last time all the ender pearls are here and the state of the system changed the item in this drop has changed and uh, the redstone uh, torches change and now power this block okay okay now the system is uh, almost complete uh, let's power it up so the um, slime row uh, moves along the redstone line and uh, if you monitor the state of these two torches you can see up it just changed and the uh, slime row uh, moves in the other direction I added a few items in these uh, two droppers so that the slime blocks have the time to reach the end of the line and by the way you can notice that uh, when it reaches the end it stays there for a few seconds but uh, that's okay because sometimes the mobs uh, I don't know, get stuck near the edge and pushing them two or three times is, uh, is okay it's, it uh, helps them fall down okay let's shut it, this down finally the last step is to uh, create the spawning uh, spaces so you can either put them just below the slime blocks with the obsidian blocks or all the non-movable blocks or you can put them uh, one lower with the block of your choice but the spiders uh, won't get pushed um, then you have to uh, of course cover uh, the spaces where you don't want uh, mob spawning so here uh, here I don't know down there in the redstone you don't want a creeper exploding there well the usual and finally you put a, I don't know, a cap on top to make sure that the light level is uh, very low on the spawning uh, spaces okay to conclude the video I have a few remarks on how the system can be used so this is what I think uh, should be done so what I showed before is the 11 wide uh, spawning platform and you can um, 
have another spawning platform on top of that. Uh, just make sure to have a three high gap between the two spawning platforms. If you try to do this with a too high gap, uh, these slabs uh, will uh, stick to the slime blocks and so the whole th system cannot be pushed. So this is what I recommend. Of course, as I mentioned, it doesn't push the spiders that are one high or the baby zombies. So you can either have this system, which is uh, also 11 wide and too high, but uh, you have to use a lot of obsidian and it can be uh, tedious to mine it. So you can also try this uh, design, which is uh, nine wide, and you add uh, blocks to two blocks here uh, that will uh, stick to the slime, but not to the slab, and it will push some spiders. Uh, you can also make it a bit uh, well less wide and uh, put more blocks uh, beneath like this. Uh, either way, you decide what you want to do. Um, finally, uh, a remark, I have a mock-up of uh, what uh, it, it the system looks uh, in this direction. You can extend it uh, quite a bit. It can be 30 or 31 uh, long, because the redstone signal propagates uh, 15 blocks in, it in each direction uh, from the repeater uh, in the middle. Uh, however, um, I doubt that the mobs uh, will get pushed around for 30 blocks by the slimes because sometimes they are able to walk uh, through the blocks uh, through the slime blocks when they are being pushed and so they will uh, hang out uh, too long in the middle here and will not fall down uh, from the edges so my recommendation is to uh, um, put a few holes uh, I don't know every five or six or ten blocks I, I am not sure between uh, spawning uh, spawning pads, that way they can fall at different uh, position. Um, overall, I think the system is pretty uh, useful and uh, not very expensive because uh, for each uh, row of piston, you can have uh, no each row of uh, obsidian here. You can have an 11 wide and uh, 30 long. Uh, spawning platform so that's about 300 uh, spawning spaces and you only use uh, two pistons and 11 slime blocks to push the mobs around of course you have to build the system uh, the timing uh, the redstone system beneath but it's not very expensive so I think you can have a lot of uh, spawning s spawning space for not a lot of resources so I think this system will be useful it can be used uh, in the overworld and you have um, uh, enderman spawning it can be used as a gold farm in the nether or it can be used uh, as a I don't know maybe um, an enderman farm in the end if you uh, make sure that the endermen uh, fall the proper height because uh, the good thing is, is that endermen will not uh, suffer from suf any suffocation damage as they are three high their head will be uh, above the slime blocks here and as they get pushed around even if they glitch through these blocks they will not take uh, any any damage so that's about it i hope uh, you can use this system and uh, create uh, an efficient mob farm